This is the biggest recruiting weekend under Mike Loxley. You are a Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So visit FanDuel.com to get started. This weekend is absolutely huge for Maryland football recruiting, and I think this weekend could could solidify the 2025 class for Coach Loxley as the best class that Coach Loxley has ever had as a Maryland football coach. The 2025 class, I love it. It's my favorite class that Coach Loxley has had so far. There's plenty of star power. There's plenty of depth. I love the 2025 class for Maryland football. And I think it kind of shows the trajectory of our program. It shows how we continue to get better and to get better on the field. And it seems like every year um, we get a little bit closer to what we want to become. And I think the 2025 recruiting class shows a lot of that and shows how we are trending in the right direction as a football team and a team that Coach Loxley has really rebuilt um, from ground zero to where is in a really bad spot. And I think every year you've seen the recruiting get a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better to where we are now and it's like Maryland has a chance to secure one of their best recruiting classes on the best recruiting class under coach Loxley and one of the best recruiting classes they have ever had in this weekend, I think will solidify if this is either a very good class or it could go from very good to the best recruiting class coach Loxley has ever had in the best recruiting class that we have seen in a while under Maryland football And the biggest reason why that is the case is because of Jalen Gilchrist. Jalen Gilchrist, the four-star offensive lineman, makes his decision this weekend on August 3rd. um, So on Saturday, he makes his choice. Um, Tomorrow, actually, I should say August 3rd is tomorrow. So he makes his choice tomorrow. And if he commits to Maryland, I think it's safe to say that this is the best class that Coach Loxley has had for a couple of different reasons. And there are is new news about Jalen Gilchrist. Jeff Ehrman just put in his prediction that Jalen Gilchrist will be going to Maryland. So all we saw were the South Carolina predictions on 247, but now we have a Maryland prediction to the other three South Carolina predictions. But something tells me that this is very much a toss-up it could really go either way. Sometimes you have a pretty good idea. And usually, like with some of these guys, I knew they were going to end up choosing Maryland just because you can really, off of the 247 projections, you can usually tell a whole lot. And I still don't know how these guys do it, how these guys figure out everything and how they get all these inside information and figuring out where these guys are going. But usually when 247 the national analyst, um, Brian Dawn's one of them. They have a couple other guys um, that work like just overall recruiting landscape. And then they have the guys that work for the specific teams and uh, they cover their specific team. But when the specific team people put in a prediction, yeah, you listen, it's important. But when the national guys puts in their um, prediction, that's when you know that it's probably a pretty good chance that they're going to that school. But right now, the national guy hasn't put in his any predictions. All the predictions are South Carolina insiders or um, Maryland insider. So right now, we have one prediction to go to Maryland, and we have the South Carolina insider's prediction that he goes to South Carolina. So it seems like it's a two-man race. 
Um, it looks like it's a two-man race between Maryland and South Carolina for Jalen Gilchrist. And this kid is a special player. He's the type of guy that I have been saying I want in this 2025 class, in any Maryland class. I don't care what class it is. This is exactly the type of player I want. 6'4 and a half, 6'5 ish, 295. Um, can still put on weight, which is important when we talk about offensive linemen. Ranked top 100 nationally. So this is a blue chip prospect. Everybody wants this kid. Georgia is in the mix as well, but it seems like it's a two man race. But Alabama wanted this kid. Georgia wanted this kid. Florida State wanted him. Miami, Penn State. Every team basically in the country wanted this kid, Jalen Gilchrist. And it makes sense. He's a top 100 offensive lineman in the country. He's a guy that takes your class to the next level. And that's why I believe when he makes his decision this weekend, if it's Maryland, this is the best recruiting class I have seen under Coach Loxley. I have never seen a class put together like this if Jalen Gilchrist chooses Maryland. Even if he doesn't choose Maryland, I still haven't seen quite a class to this degree. You have a couple of guys that are truly blue chip prospects in the right spot. You talk about Malik Washington, four-star quarterback, um, top 300 player nationally, a top quarterback, top player in Maryland is committed to your school, one of the best uh, quarterback prospects in the 2025 class. You have athlete four-star Zymir Smith, who you flipped from Bama, who can do all these different things. We don't know exactly what position he'll play. Bryce Jenkins is a four-star on a lot of websites on the defensive line or could play offensive line too. Iverson Howard's a four-star running back on websites. And then Jet White at a point corner was a four-star. You look at this class and you start saying, this class has a chance to be special. Right now it's ranked 29th, but if Jalen Gilchrist lands with Maryland, It'll jump into the top 25, and that's exactly where we want to be. If we want to hit this new level as a program, we got to consistently be a top 25 class. And to get blue chip prospects, two on the line in terms of Bryce Jenkins and Jalen Gilchrist, and a quarterback, and then Zymir Smith, who can do just about anything, that's when you are start talking and you're saying, we recruited really well up front. We did that in the 2020, um, 2024 class too. And so you get back-to-back classes with one with a bunch, uh, two blue chip prospects up front. And then when we go to the 2024 class, you look and you say, we just got a bunch of really good, solid players, not a ton of blue chip guys, but a ton of really solid players up front. That'll work up front. And I really believe that if Jalen Gilchrist lands, it's the best class Coach Loxley's had and it's really not that close and you still have other guys on the board that you're going to have the chance to get and so if Jalen Gilchrist lands with Maryland this weekend I really do believe it's safe to say that coach Loxley has his best class yet at Maryland which I think will happen if Jalen Gilchrist lands if he doesn't then so be it um South Carolina was where he wanted to be. But I believe that it could go either way. I don't know going into it. At first, I was saying he was leaning towards South Carolina. But today, I read the article um, that Inside Maryland Sports put out. And I was like, hmm, Maryland is very much in the conversation. And so these guys aren't in the business of making wrong picks. So when you have picks on both sides, you don't usually see that. And so tomorrow is going to be a huge day for Maryland recruiting. But Maryland recruiting and Coach Loxley, I think, is expecting it to be them. So we'll see how it ends up actually falling through. The outside linebacker room is the deepest it's been under Coach Loxley. I haven't really talked about this. Let's talk about more about it after this ad from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and... Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships and is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your love, your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, LED headlights, and more. 
Whether you're in a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep a ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. I think this outside linebacker group is the deepest it's been under the Coach Loxley era. And I think our defensive coordinator, Coach Williams, has a chance to really do some special things. And these guys have a chance to do some special things uh, this year in that outside linebacker defensive end group. Um, and I really, I really do like this group. I think it has a great combination of young guys. I think it's a great combination of older guys. Um, and then we got everybody back in that room, which is also something that matters a lot. And uh, I think will um, really help us this year. Just the fact that we got everybody back in that outside linebacker room, nobody left. So I really do like it uh, overall. And, and I think it has a chance to really lead our team in a lot of different ways. And I think we're going to need a pass rush this year. I thought it was there sometimes last year. I thought it wasn't. I mean, against some of the big dogs, it's tough. You're going against guys that are going in the NFL draft. Um, you're going against some of the top guys when you're talking about in the last couple of years playing Ohio State and Penn State every single year. Um, and Michigan, especially Michigan, too. They're so good up front. It's tough on those guys. But those guys played decent football in some of those times. And at other times, it was like there was not must pass rush. And now I'm looking at everybody's back this year. It's a bunch of guys that are t really talented, to be honest. Um, I'll get into um, more of the personnel. But it's a bunch of guys that are really talented. I expect this group to be a strength of our team and to lead this team. And I haven't really talked about it a lot. And I realized that I needed to talk about it because this group should play very well for Maryland football. And I think it has a pretty good chance of playing at a pretty high level for Maryland football. But I think it starts. Um, I think you got three guys up there that are experienced, that have played that are all pretty talented and all looked good at times last year, but I want them to be on. And when I say these three guys, I'm talking about Quayshawn Fuller, Donnell Brown, and Ken, um, and Kellen Wyatt. I like all three of them. I think they're all good players, but I want them all to be on at the same time. There was times when Quayshawn Fuller looked good. There was times when Donnell Brown looked good. There were times when Kellen Wyatt looked good. But I want them to all play well at the same time to have to create more chaos. And they're not all going to be on at the same time. That's not realistic. But I think that the fact that we get three guys back that have all played at a high level, that have all played good football last year, like you go through each one of them. Like I talk about Quayshawn Fuller. I think Quayshawn Fuller is super talented. Like I think he has the frame. I think he has the size. I think he has the NFL type of athleticism. It's just for him putting it all together. I, I really do think of uh, Kayshawn Fuller as that way. He was he was an honorable mention all Big Ten last year as a redshirt uh, junior. Had a good year, like a really good year for Kayshawn Fuller. Uh, three sacks. I saw some really high-level play from him, which wasn't a much improvement from the 2022. Uh, he also forced a fumble. Um, you're not – the stats aren't – crazy but that's what I'm saying he's a guy that was honorable all Big Ten which is important shows that he made plays on a consistent spot in the Big Ten as well as a guy that I just look at as so toolsy and so traitsy um with his size um I think he has a chance to kind of break out this year and take even another step where maybe maybe we can get a little bit more pressures a little bit more sacks uh he, he's 6'4 264 like he has the size and everything you want. If you guys remember transferred from Florida state a couple years ago. And I think he's a guy that I really like at the defensive end of spot for Maryland football. And then I go over to Kellen white. I love Kellen white. Kellen white, really good player. It's been playing since he's been a freshman at Maryland. And now I'm looking at uh Kellen Wyatt as a guy that it's an upperclassman. Now he's a junior now. And um, so it's like, Okay, you played freshman year, you made a jump your sophomore year. Now I'm saying in your third year, 
I want to see something special. I want to see an all Big Ten. He started all 13 games, led the Terps um, with 4.5 sacks last year, and also led the team with 6.5 tackles for loss. Um, I'm ex- really expecting a huge year from Kellen Wyatt. Uh, he, I think he kind of came in and um, – Went above expectations in a lot of ways, playing right away as a freshman. And now we're looking at him as a junior. And I'm saying, okay, Kevin White, it's your time to take another leap and another step up. And a guy that we get back and a guy that has been good for us in the last couple of years. But I'm looking for him to be, I don't want to say great, but I'm looking for him to play at a pretty high level this year. And when I get Quaestion Fuller and I get Kevin White together, I say, that's a pretty good group, but it doesn't end there. Uh, Donnell Brown last year had two picks for us at that outside linebacker um, room and had three sacks as well, was our highest rated defender on PFF. So Donnell Brown's also a guy that has played uh, at a really high level for Maryland football. So you have those three guys who are all returning that have played high level football that have been good players, but It doesn't stop there for the outside linebacker group. This is what I mean by we have a really good combination of youth in that room, along with um, some guys that haven't played a lot, but are younger guys that were freshmen last year um, that I think have a chance to, to play this year some, to get in the rotation, but I think are really talented uh, recruits and have a chance to be uh, good players. And one of them I think that has a chance to play really well is Neo Avery. Uh, Last year was injured uh, the entire year. He came in and a lot of people thought he was going to be our best defender in terms of the freshman. And and they thought he had a chance to play last year. The freshman was injured, but Neo popped in the spring game, honestly looked really good in the spring game to me. And when I, I, combine him with a guy that doesn't have to come in and like play right away. It's not like we lost two guys up front. Now he's forced in the starting role. He's a guy that can rotate in, get used to the big 10 level and play at a pretty high pace. And I think he has a chance to do that. He looked really good in the spring game, in my opinion. And I think he has a chance to be good. And then Dylan Gooden as well. Um, He needed to add some weight to his frame. I think he'll be uh, kind of in the Donald Brown role. He, I also like Dylan Gooden's game and think he's a good player uh, too. So I think there's guys up there, DJ Samuels as well. Um, I think Daniel Owens, there's depth. There's real depth in that outside linebacker group. And, and I think that it has a chance to be one of the better groups in the big 10. And I'm kind of excited to see what they can do, but I think it all comes together. And I say it's guys that have been solid production over the last couple of years, but it's like, you don't lose anybody. You get everybody back. So I think it's reasonable for me to expect a jump with the inflection of youth guys that should be able to play as going into their sophomore years with all the veteran presence. I think that room's really set up to have a big year. I'm going to, um, I'm going to answer some of the questions that you guys have left me that some of you guys that have texted me and everything. Um, and so I'm going to answer some mailbag questions after this ad from FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much, and I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So, guys, head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. There's plenty of things that you can bet on, whether it's baseball, uh, there's NFL preseason games. The last night will be the Hall of Fame game, and next week there will be more preseason games. So all the stuff you want to do on FanDuel, you can do that. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So you guys left me some questions that I am going to answer. Um, The number one question is somebody asked about the quarterback battle. No surprise at all. Who do I think right now is the leader of the quarterback battle? And I've said it just about every single day. I'll keep this brief because we're going to talk about it more next week. I've said it. I think MJ Morris is the leader. I think it's going to end up being MJ Morris. One thing I do want to say is that Coach Loxley said 
at Big Ten Media Day that he'll announce, I think, before the UConn game. So I've been saying it could go into the UConn game. Doesn't look like that's going to be happening. Looks like I was wrong with that. But I do think MJ Morris is our starter. He should be the guy for Maryland football. Um, and I think he's the guy with the most high ceiling. Somebody asked about freshmen. What freshmen do I think could potentially make an impact? If I had to name one, I got to go Braden Lee, the guy we flipped from South Carolina. And we're going to need some luck over South Carolina this weekend with Jalen Gilchrist, uh, the guy I talked about at the start with the chance to make our 2025 class special. But I think Braden Lee, I really like Braden Lee. Um, I grew up with him. I know Braden Lee. He's a good kid. Um, and I think in terms of his talent combined with our need in the secondary, I think he's going to have a chance to get some early looks. I don't know how much, but I think he's going to have a chance to play early on at the corner spot to play one of the outside spots. I know right now uh, we have guys that we like in Husky and Perry Fisher and, and Lionel, but I think that Braden Lee could be in the mix and Maryland has no shame in playing a bunch of different guys. And I wouldn't be surprised at all to see uh, Braden Lee up there and playing because I think he's good enough and I, I think he's earned that spot to be able to play. Somebody asked, what game do I think Maryland football – We'll lose first. So this is interesting. The schedules, I really do like the schedule at the start. I said it. I think we have a chance to go 6-0. and oh, But what game do I think we lose first? If I had to guess, it's a really hard prediction because I think our first six games were better than everyone. So I'll say USC on October 19th. But that's kind of like an iffy kind of answer. I'm really not sure. It could go a bunch of different ways. But I do think that USC is probably where I would go. Michigan State in week two could get really interesting with their new quarterback, their new coach. Indiana, too, on September 28th. So it could go a lot of different ways. But we'll see what happens. How high do I think Maryland will land with their 2025 recruiting class? I think it can get – if they get Jalen Gilchrist and there's a couple other four-star kids that are both predicted to go to Ohio State that I think we have a shot at getting. But if we get Jalen Gilchrist, I think we finish in the top 25. I think that the Jalen Gilchrist thing's a toss-up. I think we could get as high as about 22, 23. And I think we could go as low as probably like 32, 33. There's some people behind us. Um, that are coming definitely. So I think that's around where we'll finish. Um, probably meet you in the middle somewhere. We'll probably go around 28, 27, which is where we are about now, but as high as we possibly could get, I think probably 25, 24, 23, but I don't want to act like that matters a ton. Like, yeah, if you're a top 10 class, like that's humongous. But the difference between like a 30 and a 25 class, like, yeah, there's a difference in terms of the stars. But at the end of the day, it's going to just come down to a lot. How Coach Loxley is able to develop, um, how Coach Williams, how, how Coach Gaddis, how they're going to be able to develop. Um, that's really what it's going to come down to. All right, so somebody asked a question about Coach Brian Williams. Do I think that he'll stay the Maryland defensive coordinator for the next couple of years? I do think he's going to get a head coaching job. I don't think it's going to be like a huge, like a, a, a like a power five job, but I think he's going to get like a solid coaching job somewhere to start to kick him off. He's a really good football coach and we're kind of just waiting. I feel like coach Loxley said this too, waiting for him to just kind of get his opportunity as a head coach. And I think that could come pretty soon um, for him. And I wouldn't be surprised if coach Williams is gone before we know it. I would not be surprised at all. I think that's something that definitely has a pretty good chance at happening. And so I think that's something that's coming. I think that's something that's entirely possible um, that Coach Williams does take a head coaching job soon. And uh, I don't see it being power five, but I do, or power four, I guess they say now, but I do think they um, have um, have a job coming soon. So uh, I do think he's a really good defensive coordinator. And then my last question is Roman Hemby. Do I think Roman Hemby compares to some of the best backs in the Big Ten, which is a good question. 
I think he's definitely up there in terms of the Big Ten running backs, but I don't see him as a tier one. There are some guys up there like um, Singleton at Penn State, uh, like the Minyunga guy at Rutgers, um, like uh, the two guys at Ohio State, Junkins and Travion Henderson that are elite that I wouldn't put Roman Hemby in, but I put Hemby in the next um, kind of tier down, and I think that he could prove himself this year as a really good running back, but I wouldn't put him in the tier one backs. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. If you guys want any questions answered, just DM me on Twitter. Uh, people have been asking me different things, so I just wanted to answer them all on here. But everybody, thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Going through this right here in the city of Chicago, the top five cities in the United States.